What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Honda lawnmower that I picked off the curb for free and the problem is that the transmission has a slow leak. Now if we want to continue to use the self propel we're going to have to either keep filling up the transmission or we can fix the leak. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video, we try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So in the last video on this mower, we figured out why the self-propel wasn't working and the reason was kind of strange. It turns out that the drive belt was off the crank pulley. Now the drive belt is quite difficult to install, so the idea that it would fall off by itself is kind of hard to believe. The only thing that I could come up with was that it was done on purpose. The previous owner must have known that the transmission was leaking, so to try and stop from destroying the transmission, they opted to disable the drive system instead. Now that's only a theory, but it's the only one that made sense to me. And it looks like it was a wise choice in disabling the self-propel because after opening the transmission, it turns out almost all of the oil was gone. So I replaced the oil, closed the transmission, and then tried using the mower for a little bit. The problem though was it was still leaking. I eventually found the problem which turned out to be some fibers had bridged the seal. I removed as much as I could but it kept leaking, so I think there's still some fibers stuck in the seal. And the only way to fix it is to remove the seal and replace it. The problem is I think I need to remove the entire transmission to replace this one seal because there's just not enough room for a quick removal and installation. Now after draining all the fluids I put the mower on its back to make filming a little bit easier. I then need to remove the wheels and everything on the end of the drive shafts from the transmission so I can slide it out of the deck. When taking off these pieces, just be very careful because the pieces are quite small and can be easily lost. I'm using a magnetic tool holder to help organize the pieces that come off the shaft. If you don't have one of these, use something to help organize the pieces so you can easily put them back on. Now to help get the retaining clips off, I'm using a snap ring plier which you can find online for about $15 to $25. Now you can find them for a lot less if you wait for a sale from your local tool distributor. I didn't show doing it on this side, but don't forget to remove the spring that's sitting in the keyway. Once this side is done, I'll do the same for the other side. I don't know how much a repair shop would charge for this job, but I'm pretty certain they would discourage you from it and suggest that you buy a new mower instead, preferably from them. Now after getting both shafts free of all the extra parts, I tried to move the transmission to see how much more room I needed, and in the process, the bushing came out of the adjusting arm. Now this actually works to our advantage as it gives us a little bit more play to remove the transmission. So there's a return spring connected to the plate on the transmission along with the cable to activate the self-propel. To make it easier to disconnect them, I'm going to remove the plate instead. Once the plate has been removed, you can see just how much oil has been lost in several days while in storage, and that means we wouldn't have been able to use the self-propel because every month it would be empty and we need to replace this fluid. Now I did try to slide the transmission out of the deck, however there's still not enough room for the ends to clear. That means we need to remove at least one of these metal panels that makes up the chute. I don't like removing all these panels, so I'm only going to take off the ones that are in the way and loosen the others. Now the plate that was directly in the way is finally out, but this vertical plate is still in the way. However, I'm not going to remove it, but I will remove any fasteners so the plate will be loose enough that we can get it out of the way. Now that we have a little bit more room, we're able to slide the transmission out of the deck. Now with it out of the way, there's nothing to keep tension on the return spring, so the spring automatically disconnected itself, so I'll just move it aside. Before we can remove the transmission from the deck, we need to take the belt off the pulley. Now the problem is that there's a guard around the pulley that keeps it from coming off and we need to take off at least one bolt so we can swing it away. Now if you want to remove the guard completely, that's up to you, but it's not necessary. I find it easier just to loosen the second bolt and swing it away. Now even with the guard loose, it's still difficult to take the belt off the pulley. Now space is very limited, so filming this part was almost impossible. With the belt off the pulley, we can finally try and remove the transmission. It's not necessary to remove the bushings, but for some reason, these just seem to want to pop out without any effort. Now, with them both gone, it does give it a little bit more flexibility to remove the transmission. In the end, I did have to rotate it a bit so it would clear the other metal guard. I know there's a better way of removing these old seals, but I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver instead. If you have a better way of doing this, I'd like to know about it because I was worried about damaging the case. Now after taking it off, you can see why it was still leaking. There was still a large amount of those fibers stuck in the seal. The problem though was I couldn't get to this last part without destroying the seal, so replacing it was the only way I could stop the leak. So here's the new seal, and at $18, it was more expensive than some automotive engine seals, so I hope this works. Now before I slide it into place, I'm going to lubricate the inner part so I don't damage it. 
After getting the seal in place, I need to find a way to seat it. Now, normally I would use a deep socket that was just as wide as the outer edge, but with the shaft in the way, that's going to be a problem. I did have an idea to use a long piece of PVC piping used for water irrigation, but that wasn't wide enough either. So I decided to use the closed end of a wrench to make sure I had contact with the outer edge of the seal. I then lightly tapped on the pipe to seat the new seal. I really have only one shot at this, so hopefully this goes well. Now after lightly tapping on the pipe, it looks as though it's seated, so that means I can now finally put it back in the deck. If this doesn't work, I can still find this particular transmission online for about $80, which isn't bad. Now, just because I got this mower for free doesn't mean I'm able to spend hundreds of dollars on it to fix all its problems, but this is getting close to my personal limit. Now after getting the transmission back in the deck, all we have to do is put the belt back on the pulley and then reinstall the guard. Now this would have been a great time to replace it, but there's nothing wrong with this one, so to spend an extra $15 on a new belt isn't really necessary. Now if I did replace it now, I would save a lot of time, but if you do have some extra time available, it's not that big of an issue. I can completely understand why the previous owner let this mower go. They might not have the time or the patience to do this kind of work and just purchased a new mower instead. Either way, I'm glad there are those individuals out there that would put something like this on the curb for someone like me to try and fix instead of taking it to the dump. Now, this kind of work is not for everyone, so I can respect someone who's aware of their limits. Now, I should have reconnected the return spring and the self propel cable to the plate for the transmission before sliding it into the deck, so reinstalling it was a bit tricky. If I do this job in the future, I'm going to remove all the belt guards. I just thought if I didn't have to take them off, I'd save some time, but instead, there were just obstacles I had to work around. I didn't measure out the amount of oil to put in the case, I just filled it up near full. I think the amount is supposed to be 3-4 to four ounces according to some of the comments I've gotten, so if you want to measure it out, you're welcome to when you service your transmission. Now yours may not use oil, so check your owner's manual as to what kind of fluid you need to use. The next part is to replace all the metal pieces for the guards in the chute. Now the whole thing is like a huge metal puzzle and it's about the same sort of frustration level. Some of the bolts are under the deck while the others are on the outside while others just are hard to get access to. That's the other reason why I don't look forward to doing this job again. It just takes so much time to get to the transmission than actually replacing the seal. I have thought about leaving the guards off since I don't bag my grass but the clippings might damage the belt so I guess I have to leave them on. Now after getting all the metal pieces back into place, it's finally time to replace all the washers and clips on the ends of the drive shaft. This is when using something to organize these components will pay off tremendously. Otherwise, make sure you film or take pictures when you take them off, that way you can put them back on in the right order. Now if you can only lubricate one spot in this area, make sure it's where the spring and the key sit. That's because they'll be moving a lot when you're not using the self-propel. Now since the other side is the same process as this side, I'm not going to show it again. Another reason why this transmission might be leaking is if the top seal was leaking. Now if that was the case, we'd have to replace that one. The funny part is that even though the top seal is much larger than the one we just replaced, it's a lot cheaper. After getting the wheels back on, I put the mower back on the ground. Now since I don't have any oil in the engine yet, I pulled the mower around the yard backwards because this will spin the transmission. I then set it on the corner of the porch for a few hours, that way I can see if it's leaking. I then rolled the mower out of the way to find out that the leak had finally been fixed. That means we can now use the mower and the self propel without worrying that the fluid will leak out and destroy the transmission. The last thing we need to do is put some oil and gasoline in the mower and try it out just to make sure we didn't make any mistakes when putting everything back together. This is when I did something I hadn't done in a long time. I overfilled the oil. Now never run an engine that's been overfilled with oil as you could damage it. It's not a big deal because you can just tip the mower over and drain some of the oil out and then add some more if you took too much out. After draining some of it out, it's a whole lot better now. Next, I'll add a splash of gasoline and then we'll try starting it. Now, some people have asked me why I put such a small amount in the tank, and the answer is really easy. Just in case I have to drain it again, I only have to drain several ounces instead of 20 ounces.
So it looks like the self propel is working just like it should, and the best part is, it's not leaking anymore. It also looks like the kill switch is working a bit better after some use. I say this repair has been very successful, and it's definitely ready for the next mowing season. So how much did it cost me to fix this mower? Well, the wheels were $40, which I think is a decent price, and the seal was a little bit high at $18. That means the total for this repair was only $58, which I think is a decent investment to get this free mower working again. So my question is, would you have tried to replace the seal like I did, or would you have just left the self-propel disabled to avoid the time, cost, and hassle of replacing a leaking seal? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.